Section 6.5 is going to deal with some laws or properties of logarithms. A couple of these we've already seen in uh, section 6.4. Uh, because of the question that logs ask us, this log is asking us a raised to what power equals 1. And we saw in last section that that property would always be equal to 0. a to the 0 power equals 1. Then we have a to what power gives us a. And that answer is 1. a to the first power equals 1. This one may be new, but it's asking us a to what power gives us a to the r. So the question is a to what power equals a to the r. So the answer for that would be r. Um, this one right here is an uh, exponent that's raised up to a log. And so what you want to think of is that logs and exponents undo each other. So if you look at our previous property, um, starting closest to r, the first thing we're doing is taking a up to the r power. And then we're going to log base a, what we get as, as a result. Since logs and exponentials are inverse operations, if I exponent something and then log it, I'm basically undoing what I uh, had just done. So I end up just with r. And this is basically going to be the same thing, but in reverse. So the first thing I'm doing to that r is log base a of r. And then after that, I'm going to raise that as an exponent. So I'm logging, then exponenting, which undoes each other since they're inverse functions. And that's going to leave me back with r. So these two are identities. And these probably also are identities, although I'm not certain about that. But they're always true, no matter what base you're using. So that letter a stands for any base. A couple of more properties. These properties are the um, product and quotient rule for logarithms, and they are similar to the properties for exponents. So just as a refresher, when we had exponents, if I multiplied two of the same base up to different powers, then what I end up doing is adding their exponents. So like if I had, you know, x squared times x to the fifth, that ends up giving me x to the seventh. But if I was dividing, so dividing two bases gives me one base and the power would be subtracted. So if I had um, x squared divided by x to the fifth, I would subtract those exponents to get x to the negative third. And of course, we wouldn't want to leave our answer like that. We would write it 1 over x to the third. But you get the property. So if I have exponents, multiplying two bases uh, gives me a single base with the exponents added. Dividing two bases results in a single base with the exponents subtracted. Now logarithms are going to be, remember since they're inverses, they're going to uh, behave similarly, but kind of in the opposite manner. Meaning that I'm going to start out with two, one base one logarithm that has a product in the argument. And that's going to separate into adding two logarithms. So here I started with a product that had two bases, resulting in addition of, with a single. Now I'm starting with multiplication of a single, and I'm going to end up with two that are added. So similar, but different at the same time. So this will split into the sum of two logs. So log base a of m, which is one of the factors in my argument, plus log base a of n, which is the other factor in my argument. Now the quotient property uh, does the same thing, except for I'm going to be subtracting my second log. So log base a of m subtract log base a of n. And when we get into applying these properties, I will have kind of an analogy uh, to help us apply them to more complicated situations. Then we have this um, quotient property of logarithms that really simplifies uh, our, our working with logs because it's going to allow us to change from having something raised to the power to having something that is multiplied. It's my favorite 
property of logs because it makes things so much more simple. If I have a log with the argument raised to a power, what I can do with that power is bring it down in front and make it a product. So I can make this R times log base A of M. Change of base. Now with the calculators that we have today, um, especially if you have one of the yellow calculators or if you have an updated operating system, uh, it's not that important to have to be able to use the change of base if you're needing a decimal approximation. Uh, when we're going to be working with, uh, if you're asked to do something without a calculator, then um, you'll need to be able to apply the change of base and we will see some problems like that. But your calculator can, and, uh, can I don't know the word I'm looking for, can give you a number for, can compute other bases. Uh, but previously calculators could not, so that's why we needed this. So here's the change of base formula. The change of base formula is going to take any base and allow you to change it into any other base that you want. So we're changing from base A in this case to base whatever you chose, base, base. So in a change of base, we're going to change from base A to any base you choose. As long as that base is not equal to one and greater than zero. So log base A of M is going to turn into the quotient of two logarithms. It will be log base A of M divided by log base, excuse me, log base base of M divided by log base base of A. Let's look at an example that might help. So we are going to change log base 7 of 54 into base 10, and then we'll change it into base 8. So remember when we are working with base 10, that is a common logarithm. And we do not uh, re, we don't write log base 10, we just write LOG because it's assumed that if there's no base written, it is a common log. So we're just going to simply rewrite this as the log of, remember the original argument goes in the numerator, so log 54 divided by log 7, since 7 was the previous base. And that's just rewriting it. That's it. That's all you have to do to rewrite it. Now, if they ask you for a decimal approximation, we will go to our calculator, and we're going to need to use this LOG button that is next to the 7. So we would need to do the log of 54, and I'm going to put that in a parenthesis, being in the numerator. So log of 54 and close my parenthesis. Um, I have to close it twice because my calculator gave, already gave me another parenthesis, so make sure that you get both closed if your calculator does the same thing. And then I'm going to divide that by log of 7, Oops, which I also want in parentheses, log of 7. Close both sets of parentheses and enter. That is 2.0499 or whatever they want you to round to. Now our calculators, this if you have the same operating system that I have, um, there is a log base feature. I think it is in number. Oh, give me a second to find it. Okay, got it. It's in the math menu. So if you have the same operating system I do and you push the math button and then you scroll down to log base, there it is, and enter, then it's going to give me the option to type in that base of 7 and the argument of 54. And you'll see that it is going to give me the same decimal approximation that we had when we used the change base formula. 
So let's practice it with base E using that same change of base formula. Base E, remember, is the natural logarithm. And that one also, we don't write log base E. Uh, what we write is LN. So um, we can use any base we want. So I'm going to change from a base 7 to a base of E. So my log base 7 of 54 becomes the natural log of the original argument, 54, divided by the natural log of the original base, which was 7. Now the natural log button on the calculator is next to the 4, so we'll go ahead and double check to make sure that we've done this correctly. So natural log, oops I want that in parentheses, natural log of 54, close the parentheses, divided by, in parentheses, natural log of 7, and that gives me the same thing, 2.0499. Now, if I were to ask you a question on a quiz or test um, using the change of base, I would expect you to have that written out. Um, I may or may not, in fact, ask you for the decimal approximation. I may just be looking to make sure that you know how to apply that change of base so that we can do things like this example here. So we are going to simplify log base eight of 32 using the change of base and we are not going to use a calculator. So we're um, remember that logs are asking us a question. This log is asking me eight to what power gives me 32. Now, if I knew the answer to that question, I would not have to use change of base. I would just answer the question. Like if it said log base 8 of 64, I could answer that saying 2. But it doesn't. It says log base 8 of 32. Now, the 8 and 32 remind me of each other, like they're compatible numbers. Um, I do need to make a decision about what base to use. I can choose anything I want. Um, if I chose 8, then I would be basically just writing log base 8 of 32 over log base 8 of 8, and that's not going to help me out because I'll end up right where I started. Um, similarly, if I chose 32 as a base, but I remember something about the 8 and the 32. I remember that 8 is 2 to the third power. Um, that you probably do remember, but 32 you may not. But if you think about doing uh, more like repeated multiplication, uh, if I do 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So I can figure out that 32 is 2 to the fifth. So since both of my numbers can be written in terms of uh, a base of 2, I am going to use 2 for my base. So I'm going to rewrite this log base 8 of 32 as log base 2 of the original argument, which was 32, divided by log base 2 of the original base, which was 8. From here, I can answer those questions because the numerator is asking me 2 to what power gives me 32. And we just saw the answer over here. That answer is 5. The denominator is asking me 2 to what power gives me 8. And we also know that answer is 3. So at the end of the day, this answer is 5 thirds, meaning that 8 raised to the power of 5 thirds is equal to 32. I'm also aware that you can go to your calculator and ask it to tell you what log base to excuse me log base 8 of 32 is and get 1.6 repeating which you may recognize as a 1 and 2 thirds or 5 thirds however you should practice using that change of base formula so that you're familiar with it um, in case you need to apply it on a quiz or a test. All right, let's look at 
applying some of those properties to logarithms. Log base 12 of 9 plus log base 12 of 16. Let me put my formulas page up here so we can refer back to it. So here this looks like this um, product property of logs, but on the other side of it. So I am going to be able to combine those two back together again to make this into log base 12 of 9 times 16. 9 times 16 is 144. So that's log base 12 of 144. And then remember that this log is asking me a question. 12 raised up to what power gives me 144? And the answer to that is 2. All right, what do we have next? Log base 2 of 160 minus log base 2 of 5. Well, that's looking like this property right here, that second property, the quotient property of logs. So I'm going to be able to rewrite this as a single log. So log base 2 of, uh, with the quotient of 160 divided by 5. And then 160 divided by 5, one, well, 160 divided by 10 would be 16, and then multiply that times 2. So log base 2 of 32. And we just saw that one in our previous page. This is asking 2 to what power gives me 32, and we just saw the answer to that is 5. What's this one doing? Log base 2 of 8 to the 33rd. So that's my, remember that's the one that I like, because I have um, a log that has an argument raised up to the power. So I can take that power and bring it to the front, making it multiplication. So I can take this power that's on my argument, bring it out to the front, which then makes that 33 times log base 2 of 8. And log base 2 of 8 is asking me a question I know the answer to. 2 to what power gives me 8? Well, that's the third power. So this is then 33 times 3, which gives me 99. All right, this one might require a little bit of creative thinking. So we are looking at the log, which is a common log, of 1 divided by the square root of 1,000. So this one is looking like that division problem. So I'm going to separate it into two separate logs that are subtracted. So this is going to become the common log of 1 minus the common log of square root of 1,000. And then I want to remind you, in case you need a reminder, you may not, about square roots and cube roots and fifth roots and such like that. Remember that if I have the square root of something, I could rewrite that as a fractional exponent, x to the one half. Similar, like if I had the cube root, that would be x to the one third, et cetera, et cetera. So keep this in mind about radicals and exponents because you'll see that a lot actually with logarithms that they like to have, they like to throw those in there. And the reason they like to throw them in is because then you can use that property that I really like to simplify it down. So I'm going to rewrite this as the common log of 1 minus the common log of 1,000 raised to the power of 1 half. And now we do have that property where I have a log with an argument raised to a power. I can bring the power out in front. So now I have the common log of 1 minus the common log of 1 half times the common log of 1,000. 
So we have a couple questions that these logs are asking us. The first log is asking us 10 to what power gives us 1? Well, that happens to be one of our identities that we started out with. Any log, the log of any base of 1 is 0. And that's true here as well. 10 to the 0 power equals 1. So I'm going to replace log com, uh, common log of 1 with 0. And then minus 1 half times. This log is asking me, remember the base is 10. 10 to what power gives me 1,000? And that would be to the third power. So I'll replace common log of 1,000 with 3. Then I just have some simple math here. Uh, 0 minus 1 half times 3 is 3 halves. So that's going to give me negative 3 halves. The next page is where we're going to start writing um, a longer set of uh, things into like sums and differences. And I'm going to give you an analogy. Um, so we will come back and do that on another video.